Um, we're always doing something in City Hall, a uh, complicated situation. Um, we welcome uh, feedback, comment, uh, criticism, and debate. Um, you know, it's a, hard, it's a hard thing to do to make decisions for uh, the community. As Mayor Sanford always used to say, uh, all the easy decisions have already been made. Uh, and and I've, I've heard feedback um, that, that sometimes people feel um, that we're not listening, uh, whether that's me or staff or the assembly. It's just not the case. Maybe we don't answer as, as quickly as you like. Maybe, maybe we reach different conclusions. But boy, we listen hard uh, to the public. Um, the amount of comment that we get uh, in is, is jaw-dropping and how hard assembly members work to try and make good decisions for the community. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not easy. We show up every day uh, and in our hearts, uh, the goal is best interest of the citizens of Juno. So we're here today on uh, New City Hall. Um, and a lot of you are thinking, didn't we just vote on this? We did vote on this. It failed last year. A lot has changed, but doing nothing is not an option. We are at a fork in the road, and the question that we should be asking is, what is the best use of our money? Your money, my money, our money. That's, that's the question. Uh, we, we want to make a wise decision with public resources. We can often focus on uh, what we don't agree on, but I think there is more that unites us and brings us together. Uh, for our goals on city government, I mean, this is, this is really obvious. We want to operate efficiently and effectively. We all agree on that. We want the city to be easy to use, whether, whether you're paying bills, coming down for information, engaging in the political process, applying for a job, whatever. We want the city to be easy to use for its citizens and accessible. And we, nobody wants to pay more than necessary. We want city government to cost as little as possible. We all share those, those goals. So why now? Why do? Why now? And how did we get here? We're in a failing building. And honestly, we're back on the ballot this year because the assembly, myself, our staff, we can't stomach the thought of wasting public money. What we are doing is not using our money well. That's just, that's just simple, simple math, and we'll get into that. Our building, 70 years old, needs way more than a coat of paint. Um, we're, we're not a fan of doing a, a lipstick on a pig project to make it look a little better. We've got significant um, building needs. And, and I brought a prop. So we we're in a, a 70 year old building, and this is Murph. He's one of our building mechanics, mechanics, and he's desperate for us to get a new city hall. One day I hear this loud clanging outside my office, metal on metal. I go outside, I'm like, Murph, what are you doing? And he's, he's hitting the clean out on the plumbing with a sledgehammer, 70 year old steel plumbing. Uh, and he gets the clean out off, and, and you know, he's trying to snake the line out, and he can barely snake it out. And on the right is a plywood box over one of our urinals, because the same thing happened last year. And the mechanic said to me, well, we could like tear out the ceiling downstairs and move people out of their offices. We probably got some asbestos down there. And uh, I said, no, no plywood box. We'll do just fine. We don't need to invest money on something that, that doesn't get us any practical uh, way forward. I have a lot of experience with 70 year old plumbing. I own and live in a 70 year old house. And this is this is what it looks like. So if anyone wants, if anyone wants to see steel plumbing from 1952 that you can't snake out, I've got real life experience on that. This this is this is a real situation. We have an old building, the building systems are at end of life. Um, we don't have uh, a way to control heat in the building. If you've been to chambers or you've been to my office you know, and you're dying of heat down there, it's the most inefficient building we have. Uh, it costs more to maintain and operate City Hall than the 
Custis Brown Swimming Pool. It, it is an old building with a lot of needs. It's incredibly um, <laughs> it's incredibly inefficient. I've heard the criticism that, well, you've let the building get in disrepair. So, so why should we trust the city with a new building? And I've heard that criticism, and it's actually a virtue. And I want to turn that around. So for years, we've talked about, what do we do with this old building? So when we have, like, all right, that stupid little picture up in the corner, that's peeling carpet, right? Can't we just replace the carpet where it's peeling up? Well, the carpet's got uh, adhesive on the back that has a little bit of asbestos in it. So if we're gonna replace the carpet, uh, then we're gonna have to tent those rooms and abate the asbestos. And if you're gonna do that, um, then you, you know, you're not gonna take away at a project um, piece by piece in a rational way if you have to get employees out and tent it for asbestos. And if you rip ceilings out and do the plumbing, and do the roof and you have to think about what are we going to do with employees are we going to move a corner of the people out um, and find somewhere somewhere for them to go we're going to move them all out for two or three years a, a remodel of city hall um, to me sounds like the worst project ever uh, estimates we have um, 14 million or so and we just can't stomach the thought of uh, wasting your money on a remodel that gets you nothing this is where we are today. So uh, in the middle, we own City Hall. So our uh, seven-sided building, which is like the most awkward building, hard to, hard to uh, park near, um, really kind of a rat warren of office space. We've got 65 employees built in uh, 1950. It was a fire station, police station, one size fits all. We outgrew it years ago. Uh, cost us 265,000 to maintain it. We rent spaces in four buildings, Marine View, 50 employees, 375,000 a year. Um, we could have 24 apartments if we moved out of there, Municipal Way. See Alaska Heritage just bought that building. They have all kinds of plans. That's not a long-term solution. A few employees in, in the Sea Alaska building, a few employees in Seadrome at Gold Belt uh, has redevelopment plans. And I will say in the Marine View building, um, we have rented there, I'm not even sure how long. Uh, I think something like 35 or more years. When I started as a fresh employee uh, back in 1992, I met somebody in the elevator and they were saying, uh, how do I get to the Parks and Rec Department in 1992? And, and I was like, I don't know, I'm a brand new employee, let's go upstairs and ask. And we went upstairs and asked and uh, one of my coworkers said, oh, Parks and Rec moved out of here years ago. So we've been, we've been renting the Marine View, two floors of housing, for over 30 years. Um, putting question marks on these, so SHI has plans. That's the, we don't have a long-term tenancy there. Eventually, we're going to have to move. Gold Belt eventually is going to redevelop. And Marine View, um, that building owner, uh, has let the building fall, uh, fall behind. Uh, regularly the water is shut down, regularly we don't have plumbing, we don't have flushing toilets, we don't have drinking water. Uh, we got a visit by the OSHA inspector several months ago and we're going to get fined for failing to provide an adequate, adequate workplace to our employees. Um, so we are, we are in a tenuous situation, uh, new city hall project or not. Uh, doing nothing is not an option in terms of you know, being able to keep living in City Hall um, and doing nothing is not an option in, in thinking that we can keep renting uh, forever. So if you're, if you're making a financial decision, we try to put this in individual person terms. Should you, should you rent, lease, or buy? If you need a car for the week, you rent a car. If you need a car for the year or you're not really sure, maybe you lease, maybe you get into a lease to buy, and if you need a car and you're going to need it for 10 years, you buy a car. So it's all about your horizon and what you're doing. As I like to say, uh, CBJ, our business plan is to be in business forever. And therefore, we should own our own building just as financial sense. Buildings, and what we're after is Class B office space. Um, we don't need anything fancy. I think there's some belief out there that uh, that we're after a Taj Mahal or a Taj Mahori, somebody called it. 
No. Um, I know. I know. I hear all kinds of things, and you just have to, you just have to laugh, and you just be like, okay, well, it's, it's the public engaging, engaging in the absence of information. Um, you know, people will speculate. Uh, it's not a trophy project. We just want functional office space um, that is efficient. If you imagine, I'm just going to go back. Well, maybe I can't go back. Well, if you imagine the last slide where we showed all the buildings. Running the city is hard, let me tell you that. Uh, I have uh, probably a lot of experience in making that statement. And everybody would like efficient uh, government. And when you've got three employees over here, and four over there, and seven over here, and all these work groups, and you're spread across five buildings, and you're trying to efficiently manage that workforce, and you're trying to like, you know, pool resources, um, you know, and who's got a little bit of time and can help on this project, and maybe somebody's 90% staffed over here, and they're in another building, it's hard to utilize that 10% capacity. We can be more efficient uh, for you if we are in one building, and we can be more efficient for you if you have one place to go. Uh, if you come downtown and you bounce around a variety of facilities trying to get an answer, answer to a question, that can be really frustrating. Um, last year, uh, we, we tortured ourselves on the consequences of this, of this. Last year, as we're going to the ballot, we talked about, well, should we have a picture of City Hall? Because people are going to want to know what it looks like. And we're like, yeah, we should probably have a picture. And so we said, okay, let's have the architects draw a picture. Well, Murray, thank you for your op-ed. Um, they ran the picture with your op-ed. The architects got in front of themselves and they made a picture of a fancy building with brick siding and two-story assembly chambers up in the air. It drove me nuts. Just about like jumped out of my chair when I saw that at the presentation. That's not what we're after. There, there is an element of what a building looks like and what it needs to convey that is important. I want a city hall to convey efficiency. So when you look at it, you think, okay, it looks like a good efficient building with some nice durable metal siding on that and you know, good insulated windows. I want it to convey openness. I'm welcome here to come in and participate. Um, those are the things that I think are important. The architects last year, they just got in front of themselves and they, they had kind of a lofty idea. That picture. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like the picture either. Um, and when you think about owning a building, who, who owns their buildings? We talk about the power company in business for 125 years and when they need to consolidate, what do they do? Do they rent? Do they rent in four locations? No, they build their own building because they're in it for the long haul. Let's talk about our tribal organizations, whether it's Sea Alaska, SHI, Gold Belt, uh, Search, uh, they're in it for the long haul. What do they do? They own their buildings. They've acquired property and they're in it for the long haul. Let's talk about Bartlett. Everybody wants Bartlett to run uh, like a business case. What's Bartlett trying to do? Own property and get out of those leased spaces. Um, that's, that's just smart money. And I want the citizens of Juno to um, have smart money as well. But we have to talk about a no vote because that, that's like the, you know, it's, instead of the conversation being, this makes sense and we should go do this, there's a lot of negativity. And I get it. Um, I get it. It is hard to sell the idea of investing in government. I get it. That is, that is a hard burden. It is easy to say, no, don't want to spend money on bureaucracy or bureaucrats. But that's not the right uh, way to think about it. The way to think about it is, what are you already spending money on today, and what does this get you? So let's talk about a no vote. Um, and here, in this slide, uh, this is our current situation. Uh, here in 2025 or so, if we don't build a city hall, we're gonna have to embark on a renovation of uh, the existing city hall. Our best guess is about 14 million. That's that big spike on the left. And then we are going to keep paying O&M of a facility that doesn't meet our needs. And we're going to keep paying uh, rent. And rent is going to escalate faster than 
uh, a fixed rate debt vehicle. If we build a new city hall, this is what it looks like. We've got 16 uh, million that the assembly has uh, saved for the project. And basically for 25 years, we're gonna pay a little bit more. And then after 25 years, that debt or mortgage payment, or however you wanna think about it, goes away. And then we're just gonna be paying O&M costs. We're not gonna be paying somebody for um, the cost of their capital or the cost of their building. The sooner we do it, the sooner we save money. And over, over the years, um, that only, only gets better. Uh, this is, so the, the prior slide was um, annual costs, and this is cumulative costs. So here, the orange is uh, built City Hall. So yeah, you pay a little bit more um, cumulatively in the short years, but eventually, um, you cross that line, and the project pays for itself. Now, maybe you want to be more conservative on the math. We, we've been conservative. We're not trying to sell blue sky on this. But if you want to be more conservative on the math, eventually, it pays for itself. Whatever input you put in there, sooner or later, when you own your building, you're going to be paying less over the long haul. So, so I ask you, how many of you rent your house? Raise your hand. Couple. Right? How many of you, knowing that you love Juno, want to live in Juno, and have families, and you live here, would rent your house for 30 years if you had the resources to make a long-term decision? And if your family didn't fit in your house, rent four extra spaces too. It is not a business decision that a business would make. It is not a business decision that an individual would make. It is not a business decision that the city should make. So think of, break it down. Rental cost. So over in the Marine View building, what does that rental cost encapsulate? Well, it's operations and maintenance, repair and replacement, utilities, the cost of capital. So I believe that building owner owns the building, and they should make a return on their investment. They're in business, and that makes sense. And what is the ownership cost components of a new city hall cost? Well, it's the cost of debt we incur, and it's those same things. It's those utilities, that repair and replacement, and O&M. But what happens after 25 years? The debt goes away, and that's why it's the long-term choice. But if you keep on renting, you're gonna keep on paying that private business owner for the value of their building. If we don't build a new city hall, continued rent, we're gonna to have to move offices sooner or later. Um, a ter terrible details of renovation of city hall, I don't even know how we would do it, honestly. If we tried to find, like, where am I gonna put 65 employees for um, two years or how long renovation takes and move all that IT and computers and stuff and communicate to the public, here's where you go for this, that, the other thing, and block off Shattuck Way and give the whole alley to a contractor and tent the building and, you know, terrible discussions about do we do the construction in the summer and impact tourism and congestion more, do we do it in the winter and pay a contractor more and have them work in the winter? It's, it's just a terrible thing. In 20 years, we'll have paid more in cumulative rent costs than the total bond amount because that, that rent is escalating, right? The rent is partially based on the building owner owning a building and thinking, I've got this capital investment, and I've got to make a return on my investment. That's just normal stuff. The economics all run away. Right now, we are paying more and getting less. We've got a long process. Um, we started about two years ago, um, engaged the assembly and the public as, as we're able. Um, we've done uh, everything that we can to figure out how to make uh, best decision for the community. And it's hard. I mean, it's hard getting 32,000 people on the same page. Uh, or the eight to 11,000 of us that vote. It, it, it's hard. Lots of diversity of opinion. And trying to drag everybody forward to make that big uh, decision, good business case, uh, not easy. So long public process, uh, 
and it will continue. If the, if the electorate passes this, uh, the details, uh, you will be welcome to participate in the details moving forward. We did uh, public polling um, and put a box on this, so we hired uh, McKinley Research Group. I think uh, I see some former and present McKinley people out there in the audience. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, we, you know, it's hard to poll the public, and so they did a uh, online poll, uh, and the results of uh, who participated in the poll, um, good demographic fit for Juno, so it was good geographic, good age. Um, they did their, their polling um, best they could. It's not like the old days where you could call people at their homes um, and have them answer the phone. We don't have home phones, and nobody wants to answer a call from a polling agency anyway, but the data shows we got a good answer, and the data shows that something in the 70s, 75% of people were very supportive or supportive of city CBJ developing a new city hall. Real, real poll results. Um, what the public told us is they cared about design for long service life, they cared about parking, and being able to have dedicated parking, and energy efficiency, those three at the top. And to me, that's low O&M and easy access. I, I believe in those principles. Uh, low ongoing costs and easy for the public to use. We considered um, all kinds of sites. So for a while, uh, it was really popular to say, Walmart, we should go to Walmart. And, you know, we, we turned over lots of rocks and, and looked at every uh, property that people suggested. People suggested we try and buy a building. Um, there are buildings out there that, that people would like to sell us, but they're, you know, they're not office spaces, or they're not in a good location, or they're not the right size. Lots of people would like to rent us um, space. I mean, if, if, if I was part of a commercial group or a family group that owned a building, would I like a government tenant for 30 years? Cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah, I would like that. That would be great for the owner of that building, but not for the citizens of Juno. So that's where we are. 450 Whittier Street, cost effective, we own the property, the zoning is great. If we ever need to expand, nobody's planning on expanding city government, but you can go up uh, on, a, on a new building, meets our space needs, 46,000 square feet, which is less than we currently occupy, because if we have a a purpose-built facility, it's gonna be more efficient. Um, ease of access, public parking. You're gonna be able to come down and park in one of those visitor spots at the new city hall. <coughs> Scope, 160 employees, assembly chambers, meeting rooms, restrooms, dedicated parking, energy efficient, long service life. 43 million is a big number to anybody. And we're not selling blue sky here. Um, it's expensive, construction is expensive right now. Everybody I've talked to in uh, private and public construction uh, is costly, no doubt. Uh, we're not, we're not low-balling the number. Um, we've done a, a diligent effort. Um, the, the assembly has uh, added money in to buy down the cost of the project and reduce the cost of the debt. I've heard criticism on that, and, and uh, I've heard criticism, I think some of this came from the chamber, that we got out in front of ourselves um, by adding that 10 million in. Um, I hear you, uh, I made the recommendation. I recommended the assembly, I said, look, look, moving forward, we're gonna have to do one or two things. We're gonna have to renovate the building, or we're gonna have to uh, do something uh, on a new city hall and have a, a debt vehicle. And I recommended that the assembly put $10 million in, uh, in the project, whichever way we go. Uh, and they took my advice. And, uh, I've heard since that some people thought we were uh, getting out in front of ourselves and worked, um, weren't respectful of the vote last year. It certainly wasn't the intent. I, I hear the criticism, and hindsight's always 20 20. Uh, it was that recommendation for me and decision by the assembly was made. Uh, in, in good faith uh, to try and move this, uh, what we think is good fiscal sense project forward. We would do a design build method. Um, 
a lot like the private sector, so this is, this is something new as we've thought about it. Um, you know, the way to do a city hall and the way to, um, you know, deal with um, criticism that it's gonna be too fancy. We would just turn those details over to the general contractor. We would give them this many square feet, this many restrooms, this many offices. You know, we'd probably detail what we want for assembly chambers, durable products. Um, but we don't, we don't need to be in the, uh, the business of building fancy uh, buildings. Uh, debt service mill rates, I know a lot of you uh, in the room are interested in property tax and, and how that works and the impact on your property taxes. The, the city, uh, CBJ property taxes have several components, um, one of which is the debt service. So for several years, the assembly has held debt service flat at 1.2 mills. That debt is coming off the books. We have the opportunity uh, to invest in um, public infrastructure um, now without uh, raising the mill levy. So the yellow is the cost of uh, debt for a city hall. It's about 0.3 mills. So even with adding city hall in, um, the, there's plenty of capacity to take care of city facilities. Uh, I think there's a belief out there by some people, if you vote no on city hall, taxes will go down. No, I don't think so. We have, we have lots of needs. Um, and the public likes city services. We have school facilities that we haven't invested in in, in years because the state has terminated their program, program for now. Um, we have old facilities like Centennial Hall that are important to our uh, economy that are gonna need further investment. Um, time marches on uh, as the city does lots of things. And the public has a lot of appetite for city services. Um, you know, kind of out of the blue last year, we got the ballot initiative to turf the Adair Kennedy uh, baseball softball field. And the public liked that. They, they, they wanted that new amenity for uh, the use of Juno. Uh, Brooke and Tara and I are old baseball coaches together, and you know, our, our baseball hearts were behind that. But drop of the hat, the, the public said, yep, we'll spend $6 million on that. And, and I don't oppose that, that's what the public wanted to do, but that is an ongoing cost. That is a new asset that we will own and we will maintain and we will take care of forever and we will pay to take care of it forever. And all the things that the city does are like that, barring the city hall project. When we hire a police department, year in, year out, we are gonna pay for that police department. Nobody wants us to reduce that ongoing cost forever. Fire department, same thing. Funding the school district, same thing. City Hall actually pays for itself. It is the rare opportunity for the city to do something that pays for itself. I've heard the criticism, and I said this earlier, well, that's a long horizon. No, this is, this is like the most virtuous thing possible. It pays for itself. Where do your property taxes go? Um, people don't often realize this. Uh, out of your property taxes, 46 cents on the dollar go to the school district. Schools are expensive. If you think running the city is hard, try running the school district, I guess. <laughs> if you think running the school district is hard, try running the hospital. <laughs> if you think running the hospital is hard, try running the city, right? And it's all hard. <laughs> 42 cents for city services, 12 cents for voter approved debt. That's just uh, property tax, so it's not inclusive of sales tax. Um, has city government grown? This is um, inflation adjusted per capita spending uh, by CBJ. Uh, it hasn't. Uh, per capita adjusted for inflation, uh, people are spending the same uh, amount now on average. We hear you about property values and property taxes and individual circumstances are different. Um, but really, I think what's happening is um, tourism has buoyed uh, the municipal budget and you are getting more uh, than you used to because we do a lot of things that we, we didn't used to do. I think we'll get to uh, some of those in a bit. Ballot measure, Prop 1. I, I mean, I'm, I'm practically, <laughs> It's actually kind of emotional. Would you please help the community make a good financial decision? That is my only interest in this. 
please help the community. Please help the community make a good financial decision. Vote yes on ballot measure one. Advocacy, we've had criticism about the $50,000 that the assembly appropriated um, to do advocacy. It's, it's paying for my time today, and because of the way APOC, Alaska Public Offices Commission works, uh, if we're doing something that's intended to influence the outcome of an election, I am. I don't want to waste your money. I don't want to waste our money. I'm trying to get you to make the fiscally prudent choice. Um, we've got to have a dedicated appropriation, uh, and we've got to track our time. So we've got spreadsheets, and you know, we're going to log our hours and what we, we did. Um, most of that $50,000 is just going to track staff time that already exists. We have a few things, postcards that'll be coming out. We have a little video product um, that'll be, be coming out. Uh, we feel very strongly about this, and that's just, um, we're just following state law on that. Vote yes on one, pay less and get more. I think that's really what it comes down to for me. Um, in terms of facility costs, uh, I made the argument in terms of uh, managing staff next city managers can manage staff better if they have people in one place and freeing up housing which is another core community need is also a um, very very important issue for us please find out more we've got postcards on your cable with a qr code um, there is a lot of information out there so i've talked probably too long i know take questions from anybody that that has any i have some bonus slides if we need to get to them <coughs> We might pass the mic around. Who has questions? I don't need a mic. Okay. <laughs> With the 43 million you're talking about the cost, the city already put up 10 million, so we only need to come up with 30 million? Uh, 16 million. So the assembly's put up 16 million, uh, so we need 27. What was the 10 million you were just talking about? So the, the, the assembly made two allocations over the last year and a half. First, six million, and then an additional 10 million. So there is uh, 16 million in the bank for a $43 million project. So the debt would be 27 more. Okay. What happens to the old building? Uh, uh, we would sell the old building. Um, we, don't, we don't need to be on or near the waterfront. Uh, you know, I look out my office and I'm so close to the bow of a cruise ship and I'd like somebody in the private sector to figure out how to uh, take that building and turn a dollar on it. It has needs, but it's a concrete bunker and, and I'm confident that uh, somebody in the private sector could figure out a uh, better use for it. Is that money that can go right to the new building or does it just go into the general fund or, you know, I think we, that work? Yeah, we would use it to reduce the cost of debt. And, and, and I don't want to be too bullish on that value. Maybe, maybe it's not worth that much money because it's, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for investment. <laughs> <laughs> right. it, may, it may not have a lot of value. Right. Wait, Nano had his hand up. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned that uh, it's back on the ballot because you can't stomach the thought of wasting the people's money. And uh, I was just, you know, kind of two parts on this. Um, a few weeks ago, $8.1 million was appropriated to purchase a building that's assessed at $4.6 million. So I was just wondering what the justification for the extra $3.4 million in spending was on that. And then the second part was about the water treatment facility. I remember a few years back that uh, there were articles about them going over limits on filtration and having to pay fines associated with that. So are we still paying fines with uh, because we can't keep up with the proper filtration regulations? Okay, so uh, let's, let's take those in order. So the first one, there was an appropriation of 8.1 million, which would have been a hospital, hospital fund appropriation for the hospital to buy uh, commercial medical uh, property and buildings. Uh, and you're right, the uh, appropriation was much more than the assessed value. Uh, so the assessor on that property was substantially behind the appraised value. Uh, so the hospital hired a commercial appraiser uh, who valued that property and it came in, uh, actually it came in over um, the, the uh, negotiated purchase price. I think it came in at 8.2 or 8.3 million. Uh, a 
hospital wants to pay to it. The hospital uh, really feels that it's important that they be able to control their future and not lose face. The second uh, question on uh, water treatment facilities, I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about. We are not getting fined right now on water treatment. Uh, our physical plant and our utilities uh, is in good condition. Um, so I'd have to follow up on that because I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. Thank you. Paul? Um, so um, just to follow up on the, on the other question that came from our table, um, and, and it also kind of follows up on a question I, I heard on offering public testimony um, about this. Uh, so with the, uh, with the current building, if, if we were to sell it, uh, would we uh, need to make repairs before we sold it, or would we perhaps just like sell it at a reduced cost and the new owner would, would make the repairs? Boy, I'd be as is, where is. <laughs> 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 yes. I, I, got, I, I got a couple hundred key fobs for you that can go with the building, too. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, somebody back, yeah, back in the back here, please. Speak up. I was just curious if you have a number of how much the city has paid in rent since you haven't been here. I work in finance. I'm constantly educating people about the difference between renting and owning. If you pay rent for the $1,500 a month for five years, that's 90 grand. If you would have bought that home, that could be equity that you could borrow back and reinvest. So do you have like a chart or some kind of report that you can share with voters that shows simply that? don't but we're willing to do that and uh, yeah you're you're speaking my language um, I, I, I build building equity for the community um, makes all the sense in the world but uh, we'll, we'll try and do that we have uh, uh, Ashley is helping us uh, a lot uh, this month uh, on this and providing information so I think that's a good way to explain it go ahead Back to the lady right here. Yeah. My question is, we're talking about moving four offices that you're paying rent for. Can you tell me what they are? Because the hospital is up the hill. Eagle Crest is up on another hill. Uh, the, so the departments, yep. So, so we've got the four buildings downtown. So downtown, uh, in the Marine View building, we have the engineering department, we have the community development department. They each have a floor of Marine View. In the Municipal Way building, uh, we have the finance department, uh, some of the, sorry, some of the finance department because they're split between there and City Hall. And we also have our human resources uh, department. In, in the Sea Alaska building, uh, we have our law department. Um, and in the Sea Dorm building that Gold Belt owns, uh, we have uh, the Docks and Harbors Office Administration. And all of those are going to be included under one roof, which will last for 25 years, is what you're telling us. Uh, much longer than 25 years, yes. We put everybody under one roof. So you, you, the idea is you would walk into that new building, and any old darn city thing that you wanted to engage with, you'd be like, I, I would like to talk to. And it wouldn't be walk over there and find out that wrong building. It would be, we're in this building and let me help you get to the person you want to get to. Gentlemen right here. You did mention Centennial Hall. I think the original uh, plan for Centennial Hall is to be two stories. So it doesn't have a foundation to put another story on it for bringing commerce into town. So uh, lots of ideas about Centennial Hall uh, built in the early 80s. Um, 40 plus year old building. We've, we've made some uh, investments in that, that building. Uh, Travel Juno, the folks that are experts in destination marketing, um, have a list of what they would like uh, to be able to attract more um, convention type operations. We have uh, community use. Um, 
have those community users also uh, have a list of, of what they'd like. Uh, we've been, you know, honestly stymied a little bit on decision making on Centennial Hall. Some bigger ideas out there that I'm not going to touch on today. Uh, but there's no scenario where we don't need to invest further in that uh, building. The, the vision from 1982 was good in 1982, but it, it does not currently meet the needs of the community. So it would include the chamber hall in this in this building, and then so then how many stories to house the rest of the offices? Uh, so so yes, city hall would include assembly chambers, and are we at four, three, three, three stories? And also some other meeting rooms. And and other meeting rooms, yeah. Which so we desperately need. Which we need. Yep, people are always looking for meeting rooms. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Rory, thanks for coming. Um, on July 12th, I submitted a request for public information to the administration downtown uh, for the financial information about this decision. Uh, no information has been forthcoming. It was uh, promised to me again last week. Could you give me some idea of when we might see that information before the election will close? But let, let me just follow up on that, Frank. I do remember your question. I do can't remember exactly what you asked for, but yeah, uh, we'll we'll get you that, um, and we'll get this slideshow and uh, any other information. Uh, remembering back, Centennial Hall was turned down also. I think at least twice, and it was built anyway. We we have a history. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we have a history. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to group decision make, right, which is not easy. So we, um, you know, we voted on building a new police station. So we used to rent downtown what was called the Warner Building for years and years and years and paid rent. Uh, and we took a new police station to the ballot and the voters voted it down, um, changed location, uh, and the voters voted it up. Uh, we had a concept for um, a community uh, rec center at Diamond Park. Um, the voters voted it down. A group of people got together and they shrunk that project, uh, made better arguments, and the voters voted it up. I mean, sometimes it takes more than, than one vote. Um, I think that's just, that's just the, the messy facts of local governance. Over here on the left. During the last vote, I remember there was a lot of news at the time about construction costs, escalation, and like just so much going on at the same time. And issues around that I think played into some of the some people wanting to that this wasn't the right time. Is there does that factor in? Do you do you think about construction costs and you know where we're at in the cycle of how many projects are going on? If I was smart enough to predict future construction costs in the stock market, I wouldn't be the city manager. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think we can ever chase, try to chase the market, right? I don't think that's possible. Um, there's always, there's always gonna be, well, let's not do it now because maybe it'll be cheaper later or maybe a different site would be good. Or, but well, were we at the peak of, of some of that jammed up construction issues when that vote happened? That's my question. If you, if you could see that and show yeah. that, that might help people understand. It, it could be. Um, I, and we just don't want to get too aggressive. I'm not going to stand here in public and say I think construction costs are going down because I don't think they are. I think there are still labor problems and supply chain problems. Um, we've given you a $43 uh, million dollar cost on a 46,000 square foot facility. I mean, we're you know, we're creeping up just below a thousand bucks a square foot. Um, I, I think that what we would do with a yes vote uh, is we would engage uh, in a design build process, get a contractor, uh, and listen hard to what that contractor had to say about labor and supply chain, uh, and constructability, um, and, and work a schedule that was optimal. That's all I have on the 
So 450 Whittier is uh, across from the State Museum, next door to Zach Gordon Youth Center, kind of near the, the Jack. Um, uh, it's that uh, where the public safety building used to be. Um, well, and, and then what happens on uh, cost uh, increases if or, or when they happen? Um, I think you just uh, deal with that cookie when you, you get there. Uh, our hope is that we can engage uh, design build contractor. I mean, $43 million is a lot of money. Um, I do not think the budget is too small. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there are always choices to make. Um, on new construction, I feel a lot more comfortable saying that we can stick to that, that budget and maybe we have to um, reduce scope and think about the future or maybe we have to cheapen up some of the finishes. I hope not. But I will tell you where we are exposed to cost increases is a remodel of City Hall. Uh, anybody who's tore into their beloved 50, 1952 property um, to do a remodel can tell you about remodel cost volatility. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Watt, for your presentation. Um, one of the things I'm curious about is the value of a dollar inside the community as, a, as opposed to exporting it outside. Uh, so, uh, has any analysis been done in those rent costs, for example, uh, of that dollar having a multiplier effect inside our community versus let's say uh, going to New York and, and uh, grabbing capital and exporting uh, 10 million out uh, for the cost of that capital. So have you looked into that issue and really uh, studied whether that dollar stays in the community or goes outside the community? So, so right now, uh, our Marine View dollars, I would say do not stay in the community. That's 375,000, not quite half of our rent. Um, and I would be, I, I don't know that we've done that uh, multiplier effect, but I would be making the argument, if we go back to the slides, um, that dollar moving the community forever, leaving the community uh, pocket into the landlord's pocket forever is going to be a worse outcome. Not if it stays in the community with maintenance or any other things, I would, that would be my position. A dollar spent in the community that circulates in the community is better than a dollar that leaves the community. Yeah, so we're talking about a dollar uh, uh, that leaves the community for 25 years, uh, or a dollar that might circulate in the community uh, forever that increases faster uh, in cost. Uh, because the value of capital, somebody's, somebody's got a building, they're looking at, well, I could invest my money other places, but I need a return on that building. We're going to have to call it. Oh, thank you very much.